Hi, I'm Ranjit, and in this video, I'll be explaining how to use the Smart Tags for Rhino plugin. So, uh, by default, Rhino has layers. Uh, you can use layers to organize your model, but layers is a very linear way of organizing the model because one object can only belong to one layer at a time, and often it's inconvenient to have a separate layer for every small subset. So Smart Tags introduces an alternative way of organizing your model, which can be more powerful if you use it right. So if you've downloaded the RHP file for Smart Tags and it loaded it into Rhino, you can just run the Tag Manager command, and that should bring up this panel. So to demonstrate how to use Tag Manager, I'll use a very simple example. I'll just create a bunch of spheres, just eight spheres. So I'm going to add tags to these eight objects. So to do that, I'll click on the new tag button, and it's asking me to select all the objects that I want to tag. So I'll go ahead and select these four spheres on the top. And now it's asking me to enter the tag. This is the actual string that it's going to use as a tag for these objects. So because these four are on the top, I'll just say top. So as soon as I did that, you can see that a new label tag label popped up here in the panel. So I can use that label to perform a selection. So if I click on that, that'll select all the objects that have that particular tag. Uh, vice versa, if I select an object that happens to have that tag, it'll highlight the tag with a blue border. So I'll go ahead and quickly add a few more tags to this document. So I'll select everything on this side and tag them left. Everything on that side, I'll tag them as right for obvious reasons. And those four are bottom. Those are all in the back, so I'll tag them as back. And those are front. So now, in this basic, you know, eight spheres placed at the corners of a cube, I have six different tags. So if I click on the right tag, I'll get everything on the right side. But that's that's the most basic form of selection, the basic type of selection you can perform using tags, same as layers. But because each object is not limited to having just one tag, you can perform Boolean operations on the set of objects. So let's say I right click on left and say filter and this or, or this. So because this is the first selection, it doesn't matter which one of these two options I select, you'll understand in just a moment. So I'll just select that one. So now, to this selection, I want to add everything that's on the top. So I'll right click on top. And now it matters which one of these I select because this is not the first selection anymore. I already have a bunch of objects selected. So I want to apply this filter to the existing selection. So I clicked on the top tag and I have, I'm gonna click filter or this. So this performs a Boolean union of those two tags. So that, that means I'm going to get everything on the left together with everything on the top. I can continue complicating my Boolean filter. So I'll right click on back and say filter and not this, which means the existing selection except for the stuff that's in the back. So as soon as I select that, uh, the spheres on the back side were removed from the selection. So I can, I can continue complicating my filter until I am happy with the selection. So yeah, using tags, I can make really precise and convenient selections like this. And the filter that I built up by, uh, you know, uh, combining one tag at a time using and, or, and not, and or not operations, 
that filter is displayed here. So the filter that's being used for the selection right now is left or top in parentheses and not back. What that means is give me everything that's either on the left or on the top as long as it's not on the back side. That's what that filter means. Now let's say this is a particular subset of my model that I know I'm going to select frequently. I'm going to get go back to this particular set of objects for some reason. I could add a new tag for just these three spheres, but instead I can do something even better. I have this filter, which I can save by clicking on the Save Filter button here. It's asking me for a name for the filter. I'll just say my set. This is my special set of objects that I'm going to come back to later. So as soon as I hit Enter, this new tag label popped up here below the uh, current filter. So these are all the tags in the document on, uh, on the top here. And these are the saved filters. These are not tags. So if I click on this filter, I'll get my selection back anytime. So the advantage of using a filter that's saved instead of a new tag is that, let's say I make a copy of this object. Anytime you copy an object, the copy inherits all the tags from the original object. So this sphere has the same tags as this sphere. So if I click on my filter, this new object is also included in the selection because it has the same tags and it passes the filter test. So that's the advantage of using a filter. It's the, it's the filter rather than this, the particular set of objects. So I have another example prepared to demonstrate the use of tags. So you could use this, I mean, the other one, the other example, the first example with the spheres, it's, it's a very rudimentary and almost academic one. So, so let's say you have four different systems of trusses. This is for the first floor, second floor, and building B and building A. And you want to perform a very specific selection uh, for these structural members, uh, from these structural members. Let's say I want all the webbing from the first floor. So I'll get everything from the first floor. Well, actually I named these floors, floor zero and floor one in my tags. So yeah, you get the idea. So if I select floor zero, I'll get everything on the first floor, but I don't want everything. I just want the webbing in my trusses. So I'll right click on the web and say filter and this, not or, but and. That means I'm asking for objects that have the tags floor zero and the tag web. So that gives me the selection that I want. So yeah, just like I showed in the first example, you can build complicated filters and select any sort of any set from your model and then save those filters. So yeah, this is a, a just the first release and there's no more no other features other than saving filters and performing selections. For example, the built-in layers in Rhino have all these options for turning on and off the visibility and controlling the material and stuff like that. I could implement similar features, but I wanted to first publish the plugin and get some feedback from the users and sort of understand what people are using and what people need before I go ahead and implement a bunch of features. So yeah, this version of the plugin is very basic. It, all it can do is perform selections and remember filters if you save them. So hopefully I'll get a I get some useful feedback for future releases. You should be able to find the links to download Smart Tags for Rhino in the description. Uh, if you find any bugs or issues, feel free to email me. Uh, you should be able to find my email address on the Food for Rhino page. I uh, hope you like it. Thank you for watching this video.